Hey folks, I'm Mysterious JG, and welcome back to what's probably going to be the final video of Let's Play Planetfall. Um, there is one major puzzle remaining that I kind of spoiled for myself by accident, and uh, frankly, uh, it's not something I would have figured out without the help of a hint book, probably. It's just possible, but it's something I would have had to like mess with and not want to record. But yeah, we're actually very close. Even though we're only at 48 out of 80 points, we're much closer to the end of the game than it seems like from that. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and knock it out. Now, you may recall that there's a couple of different systems. A planetary defense system, navigation system, and one more system that I don't remember. Uh, repairing those is optional. It gets you points, and it affects your ending. However, having just played through, realizing this, I just kind of off-screen whipped through the end of the game to make sure that I actually knew what was left. I wouldn't normally do that. Probably shouldn't have done that. But I whipped through the end of the game uh, to see how different the ending is. And it looks like it's going to be different depending on which systems you were... It's not just one generic bad ending if you didn't repair them. It's different endings depending on what you didn't repair. Uh, but at this point, for me to actually see them all would require playing through the game several times over because uh, I've already repaired some of those. So what I'm going to do is we're going to play through and we're going to get the good ending and I'll just describe briefly uh, what changed in one of the bad endings I got. But anyway, uh, last time we repaired course control um, by replacing the fused beta store with a good beta store. We also have a shiny 17 centimeter from its board which uh, we already figured out is in fact the key to solving the last system uh, the one system that I don't think I would have figured out without the help of hints and stuff that was kind of weird uh, although I know I did didn't I it's uh, the one where you have to pour um, we have to there's like a fluid dispensing unit uh, with a flask and uh, there's different colored buttons you can press and you have to press the button, uh, the brown button, because that matches the color of the warning light. And then you pour it into the system because the coolant system had failed. Now, the other ones are just a matter of um, there's a parts room that has a good beta store. And we need to replace the beta store. We need the pliers to do it. Pretty minor puzzle. Uh, although I didn't have any trouble with it because it kind of tells you it's a robot sized door but in theory uh, it is a puzzle that you have to tell Floyd to go into uh, that one room where there was a tiny door that leads into it uh, where you found Achilles uh, who had been broken you tell Achilles to take that big broken robot and shove up his ass but anyway no we found broken Achilles and uh, but there's also a door to the north that was too too small for a human but a robot Floyd size could go in and we sent Floyd up there and he came back with uh, the item we wanted and that is a working beta store. Not beta store, sorry. Um, from its board. So let's drop the beta store. Floyd rubs his head affectionately against your shoulder. I like Floyd. Um, you, because this has been a fairly quick LP since I already knew some of what to do. Um, it's really not that long a game. And certainly I didn't spend as much time bungling around trying to figure stuff out as I would have had I played this as a kid. I didn't play this as a small kid. I played this, however, uh, as an older kid because uh, we got the Lost Treasures of Infocom. I was a small kid when I played Enchanter uh, and Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. But anyway, yeah, if you spend a lot of time around Floyd seeing all that optional dialogue pick up, you do eventually sort of develop a, a connection to Floyd. Bear that in mind. So we're going to go south, we're going to go west, and we're going to go north, and now we're in the planetary defense room. If we look, this room is filled with a dazzling array of lights and controls. One light, blinking quickly, catches your eye. It reads, Circuit Board Failure Warning. This board controls the discrimination circuits. There's a small access panel on one wall, which is closed. We want to open the panel. Panel swings open. It contains a first 17-centimeter from its board, a second, a third, and a fourth. Floyd bounds into the room. Floyd, here now, he cries. Feel... What do you want to feel? Okay, well, let me do that. Feel first board. Fiddling with the first 17 from its board isn't notably helpful. Fine. Get first board. You jerk your hand back as you receive a powerful shock from the from its board. Get second board. Uh, I was thinking maybe there's a way to turn the power off, but I don't see a way to do that, so you just keep messing with the boards. 
The Farmer's board slides out of the panel, producing an empty socket for another board. Floyd yawns and looks bored. Interesting how they pull out the looking bored thing while we're already talking about boards. It's a pun. Uh, so, yeah, I guess if you have Frommet's boards, which is clearly something that's made of. Frommet's being uh, something from uh, Zork. But if you have a Frommet's board and you want to figure out which one's bad, uh, if you can remove it because it doesn't have electricity flowing through it, it's burned out and it's bad. I would assume. Look at second board to make sure. You can't see any second board here. Uh, fine. Insert shiny board into socket. The card clicks neatly into the socket. The warning light stops flashing. Close panel. Save one. We have now repaired... Oh, oh boy, are we going to try something dangerous now? Floyd says. We've now repaired all three of the systems, uh, but we haven't actually won the game. So we're at 54 out of 80 points. So there really isn't that much stuff we haven't seen yet. But I happen to know we got that battery for the laser. We do need the laser. Slide. So I'm going to go get it. Teleportation card through slot. Press, I believe it was a beige button. You experience a strange feeling in the pit of your stomach. Floyd gives a terrified squeal and clutches at his guidance mechanism. Then we want to go west, west, south, 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 south. Floyd here now, he keeps saying as he catches up with us. And we get into a room with a laser. Now we go through our inventory. We got a teleportation access bar. We can drop the Frommets board. And we can drop the pliers. We can actually drop the kitchen access card, too. Because uh, at this point, uh, we will not get hungry again before we finish the game. So, get laser. So, we're carrying a laser, the teleportation access card, the lab uniform, and the watch. So, we go east, we go north, we go north, we go north, we go north, we go east, we go east, we're back in the teleportation booth. Floyd scampers into the booth. Ooh, this is a tiny room, he remarks. Slide. Did I drop the tele... No, I didn't. Teleportation. Card. Through. Slot. The light flashes ready. Press tan button. When we teleport back to where we were. And now we go to the main lab. And this is an area where some doors... Didn't seem to open. I figured there was a puzzle. I ignored them. No. The doors are simply big metal doors that are that are shut, and you need to just manually open them. So that was the problem. Main lab. This is the heart of the project's vast laboratory complex. There are exits to the west and southwest, and heavy metal doors to the northeast and southeast. A small doorway leads south. There's a multiple-purpose robot here. The multiple-purpose robot is holding a campaign. canteen. Floyd says, Floyd, going exploring. See you later. He glides out of the room. So we go south. We go into lab storage. Floyd bounces into the room. Floyd, here now, he cries. There's also a slightly wrinkled patrol uniform here. Now I try to open southeast door. You don't see any C door here. So that was part of what got me confused. Now we go back to Project Corridor East. We go west again. We go to an area room we haven't been to yet. Project Corridor. You are now at the center of a long east-west hallway, a doorway labeled Prajkon Office opens to the south. That's Project Control. But anyway, we go west again. We end up with, con with Corridor West. This is a curving hallway leading east and northwest. There's an opening to the west. We have to wait again. Sandfac F. This is another dusty sanitary facility, unlike the ones near the dorms. This one is smaller and has no bathing fixtures. So basically, this is like where people work. We go east, and we go northwest, and we go back to the fork. And if we go west from here, we go back to the tram. So basically, we've now done kind of a loop around the complex. And the southern leg, southern arm of this like loop around this complex is the stuff that we hadn't actually seen yet. We've now pretty much seen almost everything, uh, every location in the game now. So we'll go uh, southeast again, and east, 
and south, and we're in the Projcon office. This looks like a headquarters of some kind. Exits lead north and east. The west wall displays a logo. The south wall is completely covered by a garish mural, which classes with the other decor of the room. Look at logo. It is a plain lab uniform. The logo above the pocket depicts a flame burning above some kind of sleep chamber. The pocket is open. Search pocket. Oh. The, he, he's looking at the logo on his uniform. I meant for him to search the logo. On, look at the logo on the wall. Look at wall logo. It doesn't know the word wall. Look at mural. It's a gaudy work of orange and purple abstract shapes, reminiscent of the early works of Erstini Bonds. It doesn't appear to fit the core of the room at all. The mural seems to ripple now and then, as though a, ble a breeze were blowing behind it. Get mural. What a concept. Move mural. It won't budge. Look behind mural. It won't budge. Floyd bounds into the room. Floyd, here now, he cries. North, corridor, east, project corridor, east, south, computer room. This is the main computer room for the project. The only sign of activity is a glowing red light. The exits are north, west, and northeast. To the south is a small booth. There's a pile. Sorry, folks, I just had a little paranoia moment about my headset and my microphone because I'm about to save the game. I want to make sure. Okay. It's the main computer room for the project. The only sign of activity is a glowing red light. The exits are northwest and northeast. Blah, blah. Okay. To the south is a small booth. There's a pile of computer output here. Get output. Taken. Floyd bounds into the room. Floyd, here now, he cries. Floyd examines the glowing light. With a concerned frown, he says, Uh-oh, computer is broken. A doctor person once told Floyd that computer is the most important part of the project. Read the computer output. The printout is hundreds of pages long. It would take many crons to read it all. The last page looks pretty interesting, though. Daily statistics report. Preliminary resurrec or research. Sorry. Research. 100%. Intermediate research. 100%. Final research, 100%. Drug production, 100%. Drug testing, 99.985%. Projected time to revival procedures, 0 days, 0.8 crons. So if we're assuming a cron is an hour, which means that point, uh, one crons would be one-tenth of an hour, would be six minutes. So... 0.8 crons. Basically, it would appear that that alert, alert, malfunction in section 384. Summon, summoning repair robot. The printer printout ends at this point. So basically, it would appear with um, with about 48 minutes. You know, this I don't know how long this project's been going on, but they were 48 minutes from finding the cure. And the computer crashed, basically. There was a malfunction. And that's when the printout ends. Drop the printout. We need to remember that number, though, 384. So now we go south. Miniatures miniaturization booth. This is a small room, barely large enough for one person. Mounted on the wall is a small slot, and next to it a keyboard with numeric keys. The exit is to the north. Floyd follows you. North. Pile of computer printouts. North. Project corridors east. East. Main lab. Now we look again. And we've got exits. To the, there's a heavy metal doors in the northeast and southeast. A small doorway leads south. Open northeast door. I don't wor know the word northeast. Now here's where I run into a serious problem. Um, I don't know how you're supposed to figure out how to open this thing, open these doors. I don't remember what all came with the game. There's a map that I was able to see that was on uh, the internet that looks like something that uh, I, I can't tell if it's from the original game documentation or if it's from 
the clue book because the clue books for the old Infocom games were actually fairly involved. Uh, they tried to sort of make it worth your money. They gave you maps that were kind of like cute and had a bit of humor in them um, and uh, you know suitable for putting on your wall. Um, so I've got a map and I know that to the northeast of this main lab is the radiation lab and to the southeast is the bio lab. Uh, but since I'm recording, you know, I recorded a half an hour video the other night. I'm recording a half an hour video now. I recorded a couple of videos in a sequence last week sometime. Uh, I don't really remember. Did we find out that the radiation lab and the bio lab are here or, or what? Because it won't let us open the doors to the northeast, like open heavy metal door. You can't see any heavy metal door here. Well, yes, I can. But but the game doesn't recognize. So if I say open radiation door, the door opens. Floyd rubs his head affectionately against your shoulder. So I'm not sure. Um, I think there must have been something in the game documentation that told you this. Otherwise, it's basically completely unfair. You have no idea why it is you can't open those doors, or if there's a puzzle you're supposed to solve. And considering that this game has ladders that go down into darkened rooms, um, there's various places in the game where there's doors that you can't open or don't need to open, like the door with the uh, combination lock, and on the other side is a room with a teleport booth, so there's no point going there, you know, for example. And you can't go down to the, re the darkened reactor area because you can't turn on a light. So here it's like I would see these two doors and I would keep wandering back and forth or going around in circles in this complex trying to find something else I missed because I wouldn't realize that there was something important with the door. But anyway, we go open the radiation door. Now we can go northeast. Radiation lock west. This is the western half of the decontamination chamber to prevent dangerous radioactive materials from leading the radiation lab, which is to the east. The door leads west to the main lab. Floyd glides after you. Is this is this a squash court? He asks Floyd. No. Floyd whines, Enough talking! Let's play Hider and Seeker! Here's another problem. Uh, there's very few points in the game where you can tell Floyd to do something. Because generally, you put in a command input of any kind of complexity, he says, Enough talking! Let's play Hider and Seeker! So we can play... with Floyd. You play with Floyd for several centicrons until you drop to the floor exhausted. Floyd pokes at you gleefully. Come on, let's play some more! Sing. I don't know the word sing. Dance. Pet Floyd. Be Floyd's friend. <laughs> I just want to be nice to Floyd right now. But anyway, so we go east again, and uh, now we're in the radiation lock east. This is the eastern half of the decontamination chamber. The door to the east leads to the radiation lab, and the chamber continues westward. A sign on the wall reads, Warning, radiation suits must be worn beyond this point. Floyd follows you. Save. Oh boy, are we going to try something dangerous now? Three. Uh, I don't know why he's slot three, but uh, open door. A very bored sounding recorded voice explains that in order to prevent contamination, both locked doors cannot be opened simultaneously. So we go west, close door. East, open door. Floyd is following us, singing ballads, whatever. East. This ra this room is filled with unfathomable equipment and or sorry radiation lab. This room is filled with unfathomable equipment and large canisters bearing radioactive warnings. Many of the canisters are split open. You can see the bio lab through a large crack in the south wall. Sinister-looking forms move about within the bio lab. Although the lights here are off, the room is suffused with a pale blue glow. Sitting on a long table is a small brown spool. There is a powerful portable lamp here currently off. Floyd follows you. Look at the brown spool. Spool is labeled Instructions for Repairing Repair Robots. You suddenly feel sick and dizzy. Floyd produces a crayon from one of his compartments and scrawls his name on the the wall. I wonder why we feel sick and dizzy, folks. Get lamp. Taken. You feel incredibly nauseous and begin vomiting. Also, all your hair has fallen out. Floyd points at you and laughs hysterically. You look funny with no hair, he gasps. Floyd frets about the possibility of his batteries failing. West. It seems you have picked up a bad case of radiation poisoning. You have died. Your current your score would be 54 out of 80 points. It is day 3 of your adventure. Current galactic standard time adjusted to your local day cycle is 46,000. 
sorry, 4,600. This gives you the rank of planetary commodore, but you are not commodore 64. Oh, well, according to the Treaty of Gishin 4, signed in 8747 GY, all adventure game players must be given another chance after dying in the interest of interstellar peace. Would you like to restart the game from the beginning? Blah, blah, blah. So we go into the radiation lab. Uh, we die from radiation exposure. In the lab is a spool, which would tell us how to repair the repair robot. Because after all, the computer has broken down. And that's what's preventing the cure from being assembled. It also uh, has a portable lamp, which would allow us to explore the room to the north of that crevasse, which is dark, and also to go into the reactor area, which is dark. Who knows what wonderful items we could find there. Well, basically, um, Steve Moretzky's messing with us. Um, in order to survive going into that room, we would need to be wearing a radiation suit. I would think that it wouldn't be safe to use the items that were in that radiation lab but have been soaking up that radiation anyway like I would think if we got a radiation soup went into the lab got those items came out closed the door removed the radiation soup we would get slow radiation poisoning from the lamp and from the spool but there is no radiation suit in this game it's like searching around for the chainsaw gasoline in maniac mansion the older games used to do this um I, looking back, I still don't know if I'm really supported or not. Like, it's kind of funny in retrospect. It wouldn't have been that funny uh, at the time if you didn't have the hint book and you were really using your precious uh, free time to try to win this game. But uh, looking back, I mean, it's just me being an old-timer, but the current generation of gamers are just too impatient and too whiny. Uh, they wouldn't be able to deal with something like this. They would just freak out and, like... You know, we didn't have as, you know, there were message boards at this time or um, what did they used to have back then in these days? They would have like uh, bulletin board systems, BBS. So you could have people complaining about stuff like this, but by and large, it was like, you know, computery nerds. They, people would have found this funny. Uh, but man, you would have like so many poorly spelled uh, with awful grammar comments on game facts about what a piece of shit this game is if it came out now <laughs> anyway no but this one i gotta say there was a lot of like um messing around with what you could and couldn't do and and games could get downright sadistic and how they'd mess with you um this game i think probably goes a little too far in that direction possibly i don't know but yeah it's it's difficult for me to imagine uh the same gamers who you know don't want to start talking about another LP, but over in Mass Effect land, when Mass Effect 2 completely gets rid of the terrain vehicle uh, and it completely gets form of free f rid of freeform exploration on planets because a bunch of freaking first-person shooter jockeys who thought that what made the game, you know, they, they wanted to just have the first-person shooter segments and nothing else. And they're like, oh, we're into the world building and the science, but man, I don't have to do anything other than shoot anything that moves. They wrecked Mass Effect 2 for me. But that's a different discussion. So now we're going to go restore 3. So we're back in the radiation lock east, but we're just going to go... We're going to leave the radiation lab. I don't even care. There's nothing good that's going to come from going in that lab. So let's open the bio lab door, which is the other door that we couldn't actually figure out without uh, looking at the materials, the manual that came with the game. Another, no, as long as I'm waxing poetic about old games and being nostalgic and and just being an old man bitching about young gamers. The idea that you would actually need to read the manual to know what's going on. And this coming from the guy who played StarCraft without ever understanding uh, the different types of damage units you deal. Yeah, you needed to read these Infocom manuals and go through the materials that came with a game or you couldn't win. So anyway, we've opened the biolab door. The door opens. Floyd tells you about the time he helped someone sharpen a pencil. We go southeast, and we're in a biolock west. This is the first half of a sterilization chamber to prevent contamination of the delicate biological experiments in the biolab, which lies beyond. The door to the west leads to the main lab, and the biolock continues eastward. Floyd follows you. East. Biolock East. This is the second half of the sterilization chamber leading from the main lab to the biolab. The door to the wet, to the east leading to the biolab has a window. The biolock continues to the west. The door at the western end of the biolock closes silently. Floyd follows you. Save. Three. Oh boy, are we going to try something dangerous now? Oh crap. 
Floyd wrecked it for me. I wanted to show you a special kind of death. So we're going to restore slot 1, actually. And, uh... We are going to go to the main lab without having, uh... Is this a squash court? Open door. Now we're at the same location on a different save. It's important that on this save, we never went to the computer room with Floyd, who notices the computer's broken. So, Or, basically, the fact that I didn't waste a turn hanging around and saving and give Floyd a chance to react to what's going on. So we go to the Biolock East. Open door. Opening the door reveals a bio lab full of horrible mutations. You stare at them frozen with horror. Growling with hunger and delight, the mutations march into the biolock and devour you. You have died. And we get the same thing we usually get. So let's restore slot three. Okay, so now we're in the exact same position. Well, not really. I mean, we, we wandered around to a few more places. We've got the laser in our inventory. Floyd stands on his tiptoes and peers in the window. Looks dangerous in there, says Floyd. I don't think you should go inside. See, I start trying to do this Elmo voice, but it turns into Jing Tsai. There is a subtle difference. I don't think you should go inside, he peers in again. We'll need card, we'll need card there to fix computer. Hmm, I know. Floyd will get card. Robots are tough. Nothing can hurt robots. You open the door, then Floyd will rush in. Then you close door. When Floyd knocks, open door again. Okay, go! Floyd's voice trembles slightly as he waits for you to open the door. Look in window. You can see a large laboratory dimly illuminated. A blue glow comes from a crack in the northern wall of the lab. And I know that I don't always really clue you guys into what direction we're moving in when I'm reading this, but what's north of the bio lab? The radiation lab. So there's a crack in the northern wall. And there's a bunch of mutants wandering around in there now. Or rather, shadowy ominous shapes. On the floor, just inside the door, you can see a magnetic striped card. Floyd looks at you with a dash of impatience and a healthy helping of nervousness. Well, he asks, are you going to open the door? Floyd, no. Enough talking, let's play hide and seeker. Open door. The door opens and Floyd, pausing only for the briefest moment, plunges into the biolab. Immediately he is set upon by hideous, mutated monsters. More are heading straight towards the open door. Floyd shrieks and yells to you to close the door. Close door. The door closes. From within the lab you hear ferocious growlings, the sound of a skirmish, and then a high-pitched metallic scream. Wait. You hear, slightly muffled by the door, three fast knocks, followed by the distinctive sound of tearing metal. Open door. Floyd stumbles out of the bio lab, clutching the mini booth card. The mutations rush towards the open doorway. Close door. The door closes, and not a moment too soon, you hear a pounding from the door as the monsters within vent their frustration at losing their prey. Floyd staggers to the ground, dropping the mini card. He is badly torn apart with loose wires and broken circuits everywhere. Oil flows from his lubrication system. He obviously has only moments to live. You drop to your knees and cradle Floyd's head in your lap. Floyd looks up at his friend with half-open eyes. Floyd did it. Got card. Floyd a good friend, huh? Quietly you sing Freud, Floyd's favorite song, The Ballad of the Star-Crossed Miner. Oh, they ruled the solar system near ten thousand years before, in their single star-crossed scout ships mining asteroids, spinning lore. Then one true courageous miner spied a spaceship from the stars, boarded he that alien liner out beyond the orb of Mars. Yes, that ship was filled with danger. Mighty monsters barred his way, yet he solved the alien mysteries, mining quite a load that day. Oh, they ruled the solar system near ten thousand years before, till one brave adventurous spirit brought that mighty ship to shore. And that's actually a reference to another Infocom game, Starcrossed. As you finish the last verse, Floyd smiles with contentment, and then his eyes close as his head rolls to one side. You sit in silence for a moment, in memory of a brave friend who gave his life so that you might live. Thanks, Steve Moretzky. <laughs> this, um... Yeah, it's 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 kind of affecting me a little bit now, and I I just won the game about half an hour ago off screen, but reading it out loud, but no, this uh, there this is 
reported, you know, fairly widely reported that, you know, people people cried when they got to this part. Because uh, you might be thinking, well, you shouldn't have waited that turn. You should have opened the door and then and then opened the door earlier. And No, there is there is no way to avoid this. You cannot win the game without the key that he got, the, the card he got you. And you cannot get it yourself, and there is no way for Floyd to survive it. You cannot complete Planetfall without Floyd sacrificing himself. Although I seem to recall that there was a Floyd has died with asterisks like you would get when you die. But um, I guess not. I'm probably thinking of the Enchanter game. You can get the uh, the turtle killed. Look at Floyd. You turn to look at Floyd, but a tremendous sense of loss overcomes you, and you turn away. Turn on robot. As you touch Floyd's on-off switch, it falls off in your hands. Oh, wow. Maybe somebody could have fixed him if I hadn't done that. Get card taken. Kiss Floyd. I'd sooner kiss a pile of Ontarian swamp mold. Hey, that's not nice. <sighs> Good night, sweet Jingsai voiced robot, and flights of Lazarus's sing thee to thy rest. Yeah, so he's he's gone along with his friend Lazarus the robot and. There's Achilles that he didn't like very much. Is gone. He was the last of his of the robots, other than the one that tries to kill you if you sleep in the bed in the medical center, which is pretty obviously broken. So, pet Floyd. Fiddling with the mangled robot isn't noticeably helpful. Oh wow, this game's mean. West, bio lock West, open door. West, main lab. West, Project Corridor East, South, Computer Room, South, Miniaturization Booth. Save the game. Slide miniaturization card through slot, because this is why Floyd gave his life, so we could use the miniaturization booth to try to fix the computer. And I spelled miniaturization wrong, which kind of undercuts the drama check how much time is left in this video. I figured I would just knock this out in one video, but sure enough, this is going to be a long one. But now we're too close to the end for me not to finish it. Hey there, folks. This is Mysterious JG coming at you after the fact. Uh, despite what I said, I did end up splitting these videos in half, so please join me next time for what actually is going to be the final episode of Let's Play Planetfall. See you then.